What's going on guys? It's Boo from Mile High Distilling. We're back with yet another video. We're over here at Balmer Peak once again, and we've got a, a pretty cool topic today. We're gonna be doing a somewhat advanced uh, procedure in distilling. It's known as stripping runs. Um, why you would do something like this, pretty much any distillery that I've talked to or know does this, um, and enable for them to produce a craft spirit that still has a lot of that flavor. Sometimes this is what's needed. This is a great way to come out with a higher purity than you would on just one pass. So you're gonna have less impurities in your spirits and because you've pulled all the flavor out from your stripping run, you're still gonna have that flavor intact. This is the best of both worlds. A nice top shelf whiskey can be produced this way um, easily. We're gonna explain more on what stripping runs entail as we continue throughout this video, but you're gonna see I have three full five gallon fermentations sitting in front of me as well as three quarters of a gallon of baby step bourbon. This is a recipe we did about two months ago on the channel. We didn't like how it turned out. Rather than drink it and suffer, let's go ahead and clean it up, all right? Now, in order to do those stripping runs, we need enough volume of alcohol to where we can only put in a set amount of water. If we do you know, three quarters of a gallon of this whiskey and then fill the rest of our boil with water, sure, it's gonna be double distilled, but you're going to lose so much for dilution, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna want enough alcohol at a high proof where we can throw it in, top off with a little bit of water, clean everything up in the right way. So we're gonna start by pouring everything in. I throw about half of this, what I have now. We'll do a run as fast as we can because that's the point of a stripping run. We'll do our second batch and then we'll talk more about spirit runs, which is your final pass. Okay guys, so we have begun the run here. Now, with the stripping run, remember the full purpose is to get everything out as fast as you can. You're not making cuts during this time. You're only worried about getting your flavor out. So that's why we have this big gallon jug sitting right here. Normally we'd have these small mason jars. We'd be making precise cuts. This flow would be, you know, drip, 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 something like that. We're at a pencil lead thick stream right now and we're just going right into this gallon jug, collecting everything, because remember, everything is going to be thrown back in and then cleaned up in our spirit run. I did go ahead and do the controller at the maximum amperage it will allow. Balmer Peak has a really awesome controller. Uh, it's a 220 volt, hits about 24 amps, so 5,500 watt element. This thing heated up really fast. Now that I am heated up, I've gone ahead and slowed things down just so I'm not getting too much vapor. We have a good water source right now, but you know, if we're pumping that much heat into this still, it's not gonna be able to condense fast enough. So now that we're here, I've slowed it down to about half of its amperage. I'm about 12 amps out. That's given me a nice flow. I don't see any vapor leakage. Condenser is cold, um, not ice cold, but cold. And everything looks to be condensing. So I tend to kinda to yammer in these videos, but in about the five minutes or so I've been talking, we're about an inch worth of distillate in our gallon jug. So we're doing okay on speed. And um, we will go ahead and give this a taste, but primarily, I mean, I'm concerned about the taste in, in, a, in a stripping run. Remember, remember everything is gonna get cleaned up. So if the flavors are initially, even though it's gonna bite, it might burn, all that stuff, you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna take everything and clean it up. So if it's not exactly how you want it, consider letting it be. So it's rough and it's all heads, but it's really good on flavor, which is what we want, okay? Remember, we're not making our cuts in a stripping run. We're getting every last bit of usable good alcohol out of this. Now there's a debate here. Some people don't like to include their heads in a spirit run. Some do. Um, what's, what I've understood and what amazing distillers like Austin have let me know basically is that, remember this is not concentrated methanol coming out of this still right now. This is methanol, part of a composition. It's not gonna make you go blind. Uh, pure methanol, concentrated methanol will this won't, it'll give you a bad hangover. But when we take this and put it back into the still, 
we're going to clean up a lot of those impurities found in the heads. So I've done this before multiple times in my stripping runs, in my spirit runs. Um, I like to include the heads, and it's just more alcohol, so why not? And I've had no issues. I'm, I mean, I wore glasses, but that was before I started distilling, all right? So it has nothing to do with me going blind. All right, guys, so obviously for the sake of our camera battery and footage roll time we have on that SD card, we've been taking breaks in between. Um, so to give you guys sort of a, a time lapse uh, or a sense of time, We've been distilling for about 30 minutes. In that 30 minutes, we've achieved about half a gallon in this jug, and this one is about a quarter gallon full. And I just put this one here because I wanna take this one and start taking a proofreading. And that's gonna determine when we actually need to stop this, this batch of the stripping run and put it in our next. Um, obviously, remember, we're not worried too much about how harsh the spirit is, the flavor of it, it's going to be rerun. So we're going to go all the way down to 40, 20 proof. I mean, it's really up to you where you shut off, but it's still good alcohol. So you want to keep collecting until you're, you're at the point that you want to be at. And we're still sitting about 150 proof. So I think we have a little bit of a ways to go. We're just going to keep collecting and we'll We'll just rinse and repeat for our second batch. All right, guys, so here we are about an hour into the run. As you can see, we have achieved full to the brim a gallon worth of distillate. And we have two jars just kind of swapping in and out, which probably together is uh, a little over half, I'm sorry, a quarter of a gallon. So one and one quarter gallon so far. I want a little bit of a disclaimer here, something I failed to mention. This first batch is not only going to have one of the fermentations, it's also going to have that three quarters of a gallon already distilled batch that I had sitting here. So keep in mind, you know, you can't really lose that alcohol so much. You lose a little bit, you lose a little bit to evaporation, but most of that three quarter of a gallon, I'm still going to reclaim. So we're talking about three quarters of a gallon collect and then plus what's in my fermentation. That's why I have such a crazy yield for this batch. And when we do these, the second batch, which is all fermented, um, we'll probably expect a little bit less of a yield. Looks like we're gonna be sitting about 120. So we still have a pretty good proof. Um, keep in mind, if you have experience to run yourself or you've watched previous videos, your tails, um, when you head there, you're gonna start, that proof is gonna drastically start decreasing. So even though this jar is 120, um, I reckon within 15, 20 minutes, we're going to be down to about 80 proof. And then another 15, 20 from there, probably going to be down to about 40, 30, 20, something close to that. And that's when we'll be cutting off. So here we are 15 minutes later and sitting at about 90 proof. Now, there's a lot of smells going on. None of them are very pleasant right now. Um, but... Keep in mind, when you are here at this point in your stripping run, keep pulling. You're gonna get that good alcohol, that's what you want, and I promise you it'll be cleaned up. So take your time. We're gonna have about 30 more minutes here and finish this run up. And remember, as I said before, you really choose when you stop your stripping run. If you don't wanna waste this time, um, you know, go ahead and, and stop at 80, whatever you want. But it's good alcohol, you could take, even go down to like five proof. We're at a gallon and a half and still continuing to pull. We'll likely get another, maybe even half a gallon. I mean, it'd be insane if we got two gallons out of this run of good alcohol. We'll just, we'll end up seeing. And another five minutes later, we're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of a taste test. Yeah. So we're nearing the end of our run, clearly. Now that shot was pretty bad, but I do have this Balmer Peak distillery glass to kind of lighten the blow. I mean, it looks so pretty. It made the shot just a little bit better. So pick yours up. It makes your liquor taste better. That's a proven fact. Another 15 minutes. Let's see what we got. Here we go, people. All right, we're at 40 proof. 15 minutes went from 90 to 40. 40 proof is where I've seen a lot of people cut their shipping runs. Austin, master distiller here, says 20. He likes 20. Um, I think in the interest of time, 
If time were a factor, you can cut it here. I reckon that it'll take about 10 minutes to go from 40 proof down to 20. So we're gonna go ahead and get there. And we finally reached that point. An hour and 45 minutes later into our run, we've gone down from 150 proof to 20 proof. We're getting some sweaty sock smelling flavors. Good indication that it's nearing its peak. And now it's time to put in our second batch. Don't do this unless you have the proper PPE to handle it. We have some really nice heavy duty heat resistant gloves. And what our next course of action here is we're gonna get this, we're gonna shut down our equipment, our heating source, our water source. We're gonna get this boiler off and we're gonna dump what's left in here. This is called a spent wash. It's still gonna be really full in this boiler, but keep in mind, when you think of your fermentation, you only got about 10, 15% ABV. That means the other 85% of this solution is water. So we still have quite a lot in our boiler, but it's all spent, no good alcohol coming through. Don't worry if that's what you see. Just dump it. Once you know you're at your proof, you've, you're fully certain that you've collected all the alcohol you want out dump the boiler, throw in your next batch, and, uh, and go again. Now also keep in mind, as you can see, there's a pretty good difference in clarity between these two jars. The second jar, for multiple reasons, is cloudy. Number one, obviously as the run goes on, this cooling that we have needs a lot more power, energy to push through as these vapors go through at the speed they're going. So we are getting a little bit of water carryover probably into our distillate, but also remember tails have fusel oils. Uh, in the very end of tails, there's something called fusel oils and they are oily They're, and they cloud your wash. They cloud your distillate. So that's primarily what we're seeing, I think. I wouldn't pay attention to it. It'll be cleared up when we run through for our spirit pass. We do have a funnel with strainer attached to this top of this boiler. We sell these for $20. I'm not a salesman, but I do really recommend getting this. The price makes it so worth it. You can just put this right over the top of your collar, pour your spirit in without any risk of sludge, anything getting in there that can uh, be bad in your, in your boiler when you distill. Also, I'll do a close up here, but there was loose grains throughout that bucket. I just prevented all that from getting inside and potentially scorching to my element. So check out all that grain that that screen just prevented from getting in there. So we've been going for about 30 minutes our heat up time and our second run has begun. A few things to take note in your stripping run that I haven't mentioned already is number one, this condenser line is supposed to be cold to the touch, ice cold if possible, but cold to the touch um, during a regular run. When we're in our stripping, again, it's just a matter of getting things out as fast as we can with as much flavor intact. So we're gonna get this thing as close to hot as we can without physical vapor coming off this still. Obviously, if vapor comes out, that's alcohol vapor leaving your still rather than condensing. We don't want that, that's good alcohol. We're running on an eight gallon boiler here, which is why we heat it up so fast. Took about 30 minutes on this 220 volt controller. Now it would be nice to do stripping runs in a bigger boiler. Always recommended for stripping runs to have a large boiler. It'd obviously be nice if we could have taken all the 12, about 18, I believe, 18 gallons of fermentation we had, throw it in say a 26 gallon still, get it done in one pass. We're limited on our size. Uh, but that's okay. It'll just take that extra time. Not exactly something you need for a stripping run, but if you have that bigger boiler, obviously use that size you have. Obviously the distillate is going to be hotter than you could expect. I know a lot of people look for their distillate to be about room temperature as they're coming out of the still. Um, we're not too worried about it. Remember everything's being thrown back in. It doesn't really matter what temperature we're at. We're just trying to pump out as fast as we can. I think we will go ahead and take our initial proofreading and see what we're at. Now at the speed we're going, the faster you go, the lower your proof will be as you start to come out. So we're actually about 140. 
I think again, while we were higher in our first batch is because we had that already distilled 150 proof alcohol in the boiler. So obviously we, we couldn't really lose proof. We'll just, in fact, we'll just be gaining proof as that already distilled spirit comes out a second time. And as we distill this in our final pass in a spirit run, that 140 will transfer probably to about 160, I'd say. This is what I was talking about by being a little bit limited on our size. I tried to set this up to where we'd be fully done in two batches, but if you guys can see this, I have probably about a gallon left over in my last uh, bucket of fermentation. So with that said, what I'll probably have to do is as this run continues to go, I'll be losing my volume steadily. And uh, when I reach that point, I'll throw in that extra gallon right back in the boiler and try to distill that last little bit out. And about 30 minutes later into our second run, we're down from 140 proof to 120 proof. So we're starting to decrease. It is also important to know people that um, the reason I'm doing between these two jars is every time before I take my proof reading, I'm collecting in a fresh jar just so my readings aren't gonna be skewed by what's in here already. So swapping it out, getting enough volume to throw in here and then taking a fresh reading. And that's how I'm getting my most precise proof reading. So we did go ahead and add that extra gallon into our still. I'm gonna be completely honest with you folks. Um, I would not recommend doing what I just did. Please let your still get down lower enough to where you can safely add in that extra volume if you have it. Um, the only reason we've done it this way is because we have a pressure relief, number one, and second off, we've worked enough with these stills to um, sort of, if anything were to happen, be able to prevent it. Um, the boiler is very full right now, uh, very, very full. It is not recommended. You always leave a few rooms of headspace. We will be very careful, um, but just for the, in the interest of how much volume we had and the time we have at this distillery, I wish we could be here all day and do things right. We physically can't. With that all said, my disclaimer is done. Don't sue us. Um, <laughs> uh, we have everything in our boiler. So we will, uh, obviously our run has stopped because we shut down our controller and our heat source. We'll let this get up to heat, which should be in just uh, probably a few minutes from now. So guys, this is what you get when your boiler's too full. We start puking over. We're gonna have some, uh, some color to it. Um, Again, it's still good alcohol. It'll be cleaned up in our final spirit pass, so nothing to be too concerned about. That's why, that's why we don't do it. That's all, <laughs> that's it. Um, yeah, just continue like normal. Nothing's going wrong, everything's fine. I will say, um, when you do have your boil that full, be very careful with your internal heat source or heat source you're choosing. Don't go too crazy and have that boil just get more aggravated. If you have defoaming agent, would be a good time to put it in. Um, but yeah, just be careful. While I was in the bathroom, we had this amazing cameraman behind the screen who uh, managed to turn down our controller. So when we started seeing this color, we turned down our heat source and now look at things crystal clear again, okay? That's why I'm saying with your heat controller, keep it where it needs to be. Uh, don't overboil and you can prevent that. We definitely planned this. This was a uh, 100%. We just wanted to provide a good, you know, rundown of what could go wrong during a stripping run and how to fix it. So you guys are welcome. And 20 minutes later, our reading shows 100 proof. So because this was all a full fermentation and our proof is dropping like this, this is an indication to me we're in our tails. There's also that sweaty sock sort of smell that, that's how I describe it, which is a good indication as well. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste test, just cause I'm curious, it doesn't really matter. Well, let's see, using my Balmer Peak Distillery glass once again. Remember guys, as I mentioned before, this does make your liquor taste better. It's just a scientific fact. So let's see if we can just make this taste good. Not bad. Was it the glass or was it our actual spirit? I don't know, but it was not bad. It was not bad. 
So we've taken a new reading on our new jar, and we're still at 100 proof. Now, why this could be is, remember, we added that gallon worth of the fermentation we had left over in the pot. That might be uh, what we're seeing. It's starting to boil that through. Maybe that's why our proof hasn't decreased. We should have likely been at, you know, 70, 60 proof as our tail started to head down. But I think we're just sort of resurfacing into that new batch, and that's why things are staying the way they are. Um, we likely have about half a gallon left to go in this run. I want to go ahead and bring to a point, look at this gradient here, folks. We have clear as a bell, and then tails, and maybe a few other things in the second jar, creating sort of a cloudy, murky, and then we just went to straight lemonade, and that's from our puke. So, interesting gradient here. Our new alcohol reading read 80 proof, so we're nearing the end of this run. I'm going to throw the rest of what's in this test jar through here so you can get an overall understanding of our yield. So, three full gallons this way. And then, let's say we're a little under uh, three quarters of a gallon in this boiler. We probably have maybe another 30 minutes in the run. And one thing we can see is, as predicted, we're starting to get a little bit cloudy. So guys, as you can see, we are nearing the end of our fourth gallon completed. Our proof is about 20. It's time to cut things off. So overall, we got almost four gallons, which is excellent yield. Very happy with that. And I hope this run has been informative to you on what a stripping run should be like, where you'll really be capturing your flavors during your spirit run. So don't worry too much. Collect what you can. Uh, screw if things get cloudy or you puke. Just try to fix that mistake and move forward. Um, I will look forward to the next video with you guys. Next week we'll be distilling this and turning this into four gallons of hopefully some top shelf bourbon. Thank you guys for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. I want to thank Balmer Peak once again for allowing us to film these videos here on location. They are just a wonderful distillery, wonderful people. Um, thank you to Austin, the lead distiller and owner over here. If you guys are local, nearby Lakewood, please check out Barmer Peak. Even if you're a little bit far away, please make the trip down here. I promise it'll be worth it. Without, uh, without anything really left to say, thank you guys.